Bitcoin halving expected to happen either today or tomorrow. Top analysts say that the impact is already priced in currently. Uh, Bitcoin prices right now 65,000, moving up even higher. Joining us right now is Matt Hogan. He's a Bitwise Asset Management CIO. Good morning to you. Uh, let's speak about the halving and uh, let's speak about what you think happens to the value of Bitcoin. Um, is this a, a buy the rumor, sell the news situation or is there something else to think about? Andrew, good to see you. Glad to be on. I think this is a buy the news event if you pan out long term. You know, if you look historically at halvings, the price action around the halving, if you look out a week or two weeks, is relatively muted. But if you look out a year, the Bitcoin price has rallied substantially after each of the past three halvings. And I think it will do so again. I think you can overthink this. The amount of new supply of Bitcoin coming into the market is being cut in half. We're moving $11 billion of annual supply. I think big picture that has to be good for price. And that's what I would expect over the next year. What do you make of the the debate we've been having? And you've probably seen it, hopefully, uh, over the past week since the since since the uh, retaliatory attack. And now this other uh, retaliatory attack overnight, there's been this question about, you know, is it a store of value? Is it a safe haven? Uh, what do people do in this moment when there are these uh, geopolitical risks? And, and what does it say about what the price movement has looked like over the past week and a half? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there are a lot of cross currents in Bitcoin's price right now. There's ETF demand. There's the halving. There's tax related selling. And of course, there's these geopolitical events. I think you can try to read too much into the short term trading activity. It's better to pan out. If you look big picture, it's done a great job of protecting us in, against inflation post COVID. I think eventually it will be a good hedge against geopolitical uh, disruptions. But it's a bit too much to ask for Bitcoin to both be a perfect risk off asset and deliver exponential returns. It's an emerging risk off asset when it gets to be fully mature and is a perfect hedge for the events like we saw in Iran and Israel over the past week or so those exponential returns will be gone. So I think you have to keep that big picture in mind. Bitcoin is still growing into what it will eventually be. It's also done a good job of protecting the gains that it, they built, uh, Bitcoin built, um, into the ETF um, conversions. And, and so I'm wondering, Matt, you know, a lot of people were already positioning for the next ETF, an ETH ETF, but the Van Eck CEO recently said that he thinks that the, the application will be rejected. What are your thoughts on whether or not that will actually happen. That was the next great catalyst, supposedly, in terms of the next you know, crypto to see that big run. Yeah, we have a filing at the SEC right now for an Ethereum ETF, so I can't speak to that specific filing. But I think actually the bigger catalyst is still with Bitcoin itself. The biggest unlock is coming probably in Q3 and Q4 when the major wirehouses turn on access to Bitcoin. So we haven't really even got through the full totality of the Bitcoin ETF launch. I think we will get an Ethereum ETF eventually. I think it'll be, you know, maybe later this year, maybe early next year. And that will be exciting as well. But there's a lot more to come on Bitcoin specifically. There's a lot of reasons to be excited about Bitcoin specifically before we move on to the next thing, which is Ethereum. Is your sense that uh, it's the ETF where you're going to see most of the action? If you look at what sort of how how Bitcoin gets gets acquired, if you will, by investors, how much of this is going to be the ETF versus the underlying asset? And does it matter? I don't think it matters, except in the sense that what ETFs have done is they've unlocked the ability for professional investors to access this market. It's very difficult for endowments, for advisors, for family offices to buy, an app, uh, uh, buy Bitcoin on an app. It's much easier in an ETF. So I think the marginal new buyers are in the ETF, right? Professional investors control most of the wealth. They've just started being able to access Bitcoin because of this ETF launch. So I think that's where the marginal activity will take place. But of course, you'll see Bitcoin being bought directly as well. Look, Bitcoin is going through both a demand shock from the launch of the ETF and a supply shock from this Bitcoin halving. Those are happening at the exact same time. And that's a really exciting setup for the next year ahead.